to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your host, Joey and Kelly Baird. It is the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show on 860 AM WNOV and W293CX106.5. So happy you've taken a little time out of your Saturday morning to join us on the program. There's a term that is used, and I don't really know what where the origination of the term came from, but it's called hugel culture. Yes, and it's, it's called hugel culture. And if you're l- listening and you're like, I want to Google that, it's spelled H U G E L. K-U-L-T-U-R. So it doesn't, I'm not sure if it's spelled exactly how you would think, but it's... Uh, if you get it close, the, the, close, the search engines will yeah, help you Google, out with that. Google usually will help you out. But um, basically, it's a composting process, um, and it allow, it's taking wood debris and other compostable biomass plant materials, and it helps to improve soil fertility, water retention, soil warming, and it benefits the plant's growth. So what it, what, essentially what it is, it's a giant mound. And there's two different ways in which you can build this mound. You can um, dig a ditch and put wood in it, and uh, then um, then you can go about. So hugel culture. There's a couple of different ways uh, uh, to develop a hugel culture bed. You can simply take logs and limbs. At the base, just on regular ground, put them there, and then throw yard debris, biodegradable de- debris on that, and then you can mound it, put put dirt on top of it. So there is some work that goes into it. Or you can actually dig a trench, layer your wood in that trench, put your debris on top of it, and then mound it. Now, these mounds can be as big or as small. There is hugel culture mounds that are 20 feet tall. Right. And you can plant on these mounds. The, 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 the ideal behind it, and it works, is as the rain and nature and all that stuff the, breaks down the wood at the base, that wood acts as a sponge. And it releases, it wicks water out of that wood into the soil, which feeds the plants that you're growing. Now, this doesn't have to be radishes and cucumbers and peppers. This can be trees. This can be uh, blueberries or blackberries or everbearing or, or perennials. It doesn't have to be a, a, a annual vegetable. It's something that just happens in nature anyway, basically. They're, they're, if you do this in your yard or wherever, you're basically mimicking what's happening. If you were to walk through the forest, you'd... You see this happening, but you don't realize it's happening, basically. And so what happens is that the good thing about this is it, re- it retains rainwater incredibly well, which is good for your plants. It's similar to swells, if you're familiar with that. It, it captures the water that's running and holds it, allows it to soak in, and then uses it when it's needed. It right. just, it's not just run off. Yeah, so it, it, does, it does that. It, it retains the rainwater. Also, a lot of times in the fall... You're taking your branches and your leaves and whatnot, and you're putting them on the side of the curb. You can, re- in turn, take those items, and you can make your own hugel culture situation so that you can uh, have a beneficial ecosystem in your garden, and it helps it helps reduce weeds as well, so less weeding because of the, um, the way it's set up. And also, you don't have to worry about tilling because of this natural process. Now, it doesn't have to be. I, I, I mentioned about some of these hugel culture beds are 20 foot tall. You can, there's no right or wrong dimensions to make a hugel t- culture bed as long as you have all the ingredients to make it. It can be two foot wide by six foot long and it can be just part of the inner uh, portions of your garden or you can go to a very large extreme and make it very tall and long and, and, and put a lot of effort into it. When you make a hugel culture bed on a grand scheme, it's much easier if you have industrial equipment like front loaders and back hose to dig and make this firm, you know, uh, uh, correct uh, with the the, um, the correct amount of material. Some of these uh, people in um, areas in which they live in the country, they can uh, th- they will do that and make very long, you know, hundred foot, two hundred foot sw- and, Google culture. And bed. with that, um, it can. We always talk about soil nutrients, nutrients in your soil. How important how important that is. Adding compost, adding fertilizer, or whatnot. Um, this will. This can. Atten- that does it all. Essentially, yeah. For up to twenty years, depending on the size, obviously, can the plants can live off it for twenty years without having to add any additional nutrients. Now, when you add your wood uh, items, there are some wood that you do not want to put at the base because there are some woods in nature. That doesn't work for this because they don't break down. Cedar is one of them. Black locust is another one. Black cherry and black walnut. These trees do not break down 
like a uh, like maples and oaks and uh, other uh, trees like that. So those are some no nos to put in the bottom of your hugel culture bed because it won't absorb the water, it won't break down, and it's it's just a it's not going to work well. You're going to put a lot of effort into it, and it's not going to work. Um, what other things do we need to know about hugel culture, Holly? That will uh, help us in our developmental stage here of building one. If you have rotting wood, so say that you have, you just happen to have some rotting wood. Or a the, tree that needs to come down. Yeah, sitting in the corner of your property or something like that. That The process has already started with that, so that is one thing that you can do. Wood chips can be used, but it's a kind of a different, whole different ball of wax there. That's more of the back to Eden gardening, but that is possible. Um, so if you've got rotting wood, you can do some wood chips, but like complete wood is what you want. You also want to keep in mind that you want to get the most best amount of sunlight so if you keep this bed running north to south and so that the east to west sun can hit it that's what's ideal or or based on where you're at if you're in milwaukee or somewhere else in the world listening to this on a replay you angle it to where the sun can get both sides of your bed that's why you want to run north the bed to run north right. to south so that the east to west sun can right and and then in the spring you know, or later in the fall, a lot of the cold winds come from the north. Well, they do come from the north. So if you're trying to extend your uh, growing cycle, if you're doing annuals like vegetables, you can plant just strictly on that south side. That wind blocks the, the vegetables and the, and, and the soil warms from the south. So that's something you can kind of keep in mind as well. If you're in the Milwaukee or surrounding areas, just tune your radio to 860 AM or FM 106.5. You can also find links on our Facebook pages, The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener and Home Canning. Our website, thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com, click on the radio tab at the top of the page, then click on the Listen Live button, and you'll have immediately access to our live program. Mobile devices work very well also. Go to your app store and download for free the TuneIn app or the simple radio app. Then search WNOV 860, save it to your favorites, and you can have access to our radio show live wherever you're at in the world. Our radio program will also have podcast replay under the radio tab day, uh, several days following the live broadcast. You can find all of these links in the show notes below. Our show airs 9 to 10 a.m. Central Standard Time every Saturday, March through the end of October. And we want to thank our sponsors because without them, this would not be anywhere possible. You can find all of their links under the radio tab on our website at thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com. For more information, please visit thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com.